Hi folks, so um, today I'm going to be, I suppose, just sharing some of how I'm thinking about equanimity at the moment, um, hopefully to complement what you've already been hearing from Ratnavandana. And uh, it's funny really, I mean of all the Brahma Viharas, I think this is the one, this is the one that speaks to me most in terms of I don't know what it is to practice metta in its fullness. Um, how can I have this sense of caring and at the same time letting go? How can I have a sense of love with perspective of conditions, of things arising and falling? Um, how do I have love without clinging? How do I have love? without trying to fix things down and make everything all right. Um, so what I'm sharing this time actually, uh, okay, I tend to just feel embarrassed about this because I think like, oh, this will mean I'm geeky or something, but never mind, I probably am quite geeky. Um, like, I love the Pali Canon, the earliest teachings of the Buddha. And quite often, like, that's what I go to, to give myself a deeper perspective. And it's like if I immerse my mind in that before I start meditating, then actually the whole meditation is flavoured with it. And for me, it's not just that, it's not that it's giving me information particularly, it's more like um, I think I respond to it on quite a sort of poetic, intuitive level and also on a story level. So, um, okay, so I'm about to tell you the story and read the bit. Okay, so this is the simile of the mountains <clears throat> and uh, the context to this is the Buddha is old he has reached old age and a very good friend of his who is King Pasanadi of Kosala comes to see him and they go way back so um, King Pasanadi first met the Buddha when he wasn't the Buddha yet he was seeking for enlightenment and he sees him and he's and he's just struck by his bearing and um, just how he walks along the road and he has the Buddha followed um, and then goes and makes acquaintance with him later and so it's like they've been friends for that long probably like yeah 40 years plus so they know each other quite well and on this occasion, the king comes to see the Buddha in the middle of the day. And the Buddha says to him, oh, you know, wh where have you come from? You know, what have you been up to this morning? And the king says, well, you know, kings, you know, kings that have to rule their kingdoms, they're, they're really busy. So I've been doing this and that and sorting out my kingdom because, you know, it all needs doing. Of course, it says it in Pali Canon language, not quite like that. And what the Buddha says to him is he asks him a question and I'm going to read you out look I've got a piece of paper with it on um, I'm going to read you out what he says so the Buddha says what is your opinion great king if a trustworthy and reliable man came to you from the east and said please know sire that I come from the east there I saw a huge mountain as high as the heavens advancing and crushing every single living thing. Do what should be done by you, sire. And then a man came from the west, and another from the north, and another from the south, and each reported the same thing. Now, with such a mighty menace impending, with merciless destruction of humanity, with human existence no more possible to retain, what should you do? This is the question that the Buddha asks the king. Does this remind you of anything in today's scenario? So what the king says is, at such a time as that, Lord, what else can I do but walk in the Dharma, walk in the path of ethics, cultivate what is skillful and make merit and the Buddha says 
I tell you, great king, I declare to you, ageing and death are closing in upon you, with ageing and death closing in upon you, what should you do? And again, the king repeats, with ageing and death closing in upon me, what else can I do but walk in the Dharma? Walk in the path of ethics. Cultivate what is skillful and make merit. And then, and then the king, he kind of goes through a list of like powers that he has in his kingdom. And he says, well, I've got lots of money. I've got gold bullion in the cellars. And, um, you know, if enemies came, I could maybe buy them off with the gold bars. But actually, there's nothing I can do with ageing and death closing in on me. And again, he says, you know, if it was some other sort of enemy, well, I could fight them. You know, I could use my warriors and my chariots and my elephants and I could defeat them if it was a physical enemy of that sort coming against me. But it's not that sort of enemy. And again, he says, well, I've got spies um, and people who could infiltrate an enemy's court and they could sow discord and then maybe I could win my own way by un subterfuge means. But actually, with this sort of enemy, I can't fight it off like that. And again, he just says, what else can I do but walk in the Dharma, walk in the path of ethics, cultivate what is skillful and make merit. <clears throat> and the Buddha simply agrees with him and repeats, yes, in that situation, that is exactly what you can do. That is what you can do. So, I suppose I read that sutta and, um, well, I suppose I relate to it quite strongly because I can be quite busy and I can want to respond to the world. I really want to respond to the world. And I can do this and I can do that. And it's all, it's all necessary stuff. I mean, apart from anything, like the amount of online Dharma activity I could get involved in at the moment, uh, you know, I could never sleep. I could do lots and lots of online Dharma activity. And it's all, it's not that it's not worth doing. It's not that it's not worth doing. Um, but what this sutta says to me is it points out where I can have a positive effect in the world but also what it is I can't control what can I not control so when I hear this sutta um, what happens in my body is um, well, my whole chest sort of relaxes and I can feel my shoulders go back and I feel like I just sort of open into a much, much bigger space, kind of like this sky that I've got behind me at the moment. It's just like it's a very big space to open into. So for those of you who know Taraloka, I'm sat on the top of the mound in front of Pranyar Paramita. You can hopefully see Pranyal Paramita like just behind me um, and in this in this position in the landscape it's like um, everything opens out around you and I have a wisdom goddess seated behind me and that's how I feel when I read this sutta. <clears throat> <clears throat> 